Okay, it looks like we are live. Hello, everybody out there, all the people that aren't watching yet. <laughs> it always feels weird to start these up. And oh, I realized I got to turn down the volume on this. Uh, I'm actually going to, to try to listen to the chat this time or to, to read the chat. Um, today I have Scotty Clausen with us. And Scotty is uh, one of my former students from UVU. Um, he's also kind of a neat guy, just in general, uh. all, all around neat guy. And we're going to kind of get to know him through this uh, little interview because I thought I, I bumped into you uh, the other day at uh, the Salt Lake Fan X, formerly known as Comic Con. And we started chatting and you had a really interesting story. And I was like, oh, this could be great for the YouTube channel. For those of you who follow my YouTube channel, um, you'll notice that the last three videos have been interviews. That's not by design. It's not like I've all of a sudden started to just want to do interviews. It's just like organically, that's sort of what's happened. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, just kind of wanted to let you know that. Um, but Scotty is, uh, I, I guess I met you, what, three, two or three years ago in class. Yep. And um, you, where would you put yourself in, in the hierarchy of your classmates? And don't, don't be humble and, and also don't, don't be too braggy, right? Like where, where would you say you fit in out of like half a medium, right in the middle somewhere? Um, honestly, when I started taking your classes, um, it was really intimidating at first because there were so many people that I felt like were you know, way above my skill level. And it was, you know, coming to, to class, you know, everyone's fighting those demons. You see those little comics, uh, you know, spreading around the internet of people mm -hmm. trying to draw and there's these demons like monsters like sitting behind them. And um, that's honestly, for me, it was, you know, a battle every single day to try to, you know, to do artwork. And I loved your classes because you forced us to draw in, in class. And then you would take those drawings and you would put them up on the projector. You draw over the top of them, and I found that fascinating. So, you know, going back and retaking your class, mostly just because I wanted that extra experience of your critique and um, you know building up that uh, you know that thick skin that everyone at UVU keeps talking keeps talking about. Mm -hmm. So I would I would probably put you somewhere in the middle too. And I think you, I think you definitely made a lot of improvements. Um, and I, and the reason why I, I like um, your story so much is because I think that a lot of people that are uh, following my YouTube channel are probably up and coming illustrators. And we talk, I talk a lot about, or I interview a lot of people that have like, you know, that are successful, that have made it, that are doing um, great things. But I rarely interview. Um, people that are kind of in the beginning of their career. So I think your story is, is um, really important. Before we get into that, let's just talk about a few other things, though. Sure. Um, this is totally off off the wall. This is going to come out of left field, but this is something, and we've never talked about this, but if I had to cast you in a movie, you would be the bad kid. Really? Yeah. You have that look. <laughs> like that. Um, I've had friends tell me that I, I kind of remind them of the blonde kid from Karate Kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I think that was burned into my brain <laughs> as a kid. That, that like the good looking blonde kid that's that's kind of got that, that look like, hmm, maybe he could be bad. I better avoid him. You've got that. <laughs> well, we talked a, a lot about shape language the first couple of classes. Uh, I started like looking in the mirror using myself as reference. I go, uh-oh. I've got those characteristics of like an evil villain. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not the superhero. I'm, I'm the like maniacal, evil person that uh, kind of <laughs> shadows. And well, I just want everybody to know you're not that guy. So oh, when they're looking you. at you, when they're you. looking at you, judging you and saying, "I think he's a bad guy," he's not. You're not that guy. Thank you. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. That guy. I try not to be that guy. Uh, it's uh, no, it's it's pretty fun. <laughs> okay, so enough of that. Um, tell tell us about your um, and, and 
I, I can always edit this in the show notes, but I put um, the link to your Harmon's, your your um, your news interview. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And this isn't this isn't the story we're going to talk about, but do you want to talk about like working at the grocery store and like your job there? And everybody should go check it out because like, and it, before they do, let me just say when I walked into Harmon's and I saw the the Saturday Night Live um, drawing that you guys did, did you was that was just you? No, that was another artist. Um, oh, okay. There were thirteen of us spread throughout the the uh, company. Uh -huh. And I was in charge of one particular store uh, in Lehigh, Traverse Mountain, that recently opened up a couple years ago. Okay. And uh, uh, James Benyon was the artist over Draper. Uh, that did that one. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's a fantastic artist as well. Um, I was dying laughing when I walked into Arm <laughs> that day. When I walked yeah. into the grocery store. <laughs> they, they put that on the KSL interview because they interviewed me and James as well. Okay. Okay. And uh, they put a voiceover over the top of that, which really like sold it and made it really cool. <laughs> well, I have that. I have a link to that in the show notes right now, but I can also put a link. I didn't have. I didn't know what you wanted me to to share. So after we're done, I'll edit that and put a link to your work that you want put up. Okay. There. Yeah. Sounds great to uh, me. But anyway, so so how did uh, how did the whole working for the grocery store thing? How'd you get that? So, um, you know, coming to UVU and having such wonderful faculty bring in professionals and you know, getting to ask questions. Um, you know, Jake Parker was there at one point. Howard Lyon. Um, uh, uh, what is her name? Uh, the lady that did the character designs for Star Wars. Oh, um, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, um, she, I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, yeah, me too. She's um, uh, she she's a she's like a zoologist or something. Yeah, well, she uh, she's fantastic. Yeah, it'll it'll come, it'll come. Um, but you know, asking them questions and getting to hear from their perspective, like what things helped them and what things worked for them, and then trying to actually take that stuff, that information, and apply it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then seeing the results um, uh, was, you know, everything. It would just everything started to make sense. Um, but the way I got that job was uh, I saw an opening for it, and my wife and I would go into Harmon's and see, you know, the artist work. And she'd always kind of, you know, poke me in the ribs like, "You could do that. You could do that." And I was like, "No, no, no. That's okay. You know, I'm not that. You know, that kind of thing. I don't want to really do that kind of thing." And, um, she would always just keep elbowing me saying, Hey, like, you could do this. If you really wanted to too, you could do this. It's, so don't let fear you know, cloud your judgment. And mm -hmm. Is there some, is some part of you that has to overestimate your ability to go for, for a job like in the beginning? Um, no, uh, I, I've had that question asked a couple of times before. And um, the best response that I can give is, if you decide that you're not good enough, you don't give your client or whoever it is that you're trying to work for the opportunity to make that decision. Hmm. So if you, if you put everything on the table for them, you put the ball in their court and you allow them the opportunity to make that decision. Whereas beforehand, I was the one making uh, the decision, calling the shots and not giving anyone outside the opportunity to make that decision. So, so I guess what I'm saying is, you didn't. So you, you. It sounded like you said you had some self doubt, but you're saying, I think we're saying the same thing. That you, you're saying don't don't self edit yourself out of the equation. Let the employer do that. Yeah. If I mean, if you don't give them the option to choose you, then you're not going to get picked. Right. So um, with that, um, you know, I started uh, going around and and talking to the artists that were there and just knocking on their doors and saying, Hey, do you have a second that I can chat? Do you mind? I'll buy you lunch. Uh, I'll buy you snacks and you know, whatever I can do to you know, get a little bit of time from you. And, um, that was probably the biggest thing was going in beforehand and just kind of making my face familiar and getting to know people. And, uh, after that it was, uh, you know, showing up to the interview and, um, one of one of my favorite artists is uh, Todd Knock. He does uh, post-it note sketches, and he'll take those and he'll um, 
just do quick YouTube videos on them. And mm -hmm. I, I took it a step further where I would do post-it note sketches and then I would leave them places and I would put like free art on them or, uh, in interviews, I would actually give one to the interviewer. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it was uh, something that Howard Fulmer, uh, talked about a lot that he, um, tries to bring his resume or his, um, face back to the top of the pile so that he gets more work. And I tried that and it worked because I, I even gone back in a couple of times and taken a bunch of those sticky notes and I plastered them all over the manager's door and just said, Hey, just <laughs> thinking about you. I really appreciate the opportunity. And so, so let me get this straight. So you went to the grocery store, you met some of the artists there. Yeah. You just they kind of just barged in or what? Like, yeah, I, I just walked in and knocked on the door and said, Hey, do you have some time right now? Or can we schedule some time later that I can come in and talk and, uh, I'll buy you lunch and uh, that way you know, you're not going to get in trouble for not working. So you didn't, you didn't uh, look for ads in the paper. No. Um, you didn't, you didn't I, I fill didn't out applications online. No, you, I didn't even know it was a thing. Like, you went it, there. I did. Yeah. I just showed up and was like, Oh, this is interesting. Well, let's go talk about this to somebody, you know, and asking questions eventually led me up to the office of the artist. And from there it was just building that relationship and, Mm -hmm. um, asking the right questions. So you're, you're lucky because you're outgoing. Uh, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I, I would just say that, um, I'm not afraid to ask. And, um, I think that's a big problem that people typically have is they're too scared to step outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, something my wife told me back when she and I were first dating was, uh, there's no growth in the in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone. Right. And that to me, it just like blew open um, all these opportunities for me. Cause at first you, you think of like these Hollywood movies that um, there's this mentor that finds this gifted kid and tutors them and makes them this, you know, great, well, you have this life altering, you know, uh, art career or movie career or, you know, whatever. And, I always kind of thought when I was, since I was a kid that, uh, that something like that was going to happen, but I was getting older and nothing was happening. So it, it I had to make that decision. Like, no, I got to take control of this. I've got to make the decisions to, um, figure out what I need to figure out. And if I don't know it, then I need to put in the time to figure it out. Right. So, um, just to interject really quick, um, Kendra in the comments says that it was Terrell with Terrell Whitlatch and that's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Was. Yep. Yeah, she's she's amazing. She's actually um, come to UVU, I think, three different times since I was there. Really? Oh yeah. wow, that's yeah. awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay, so one of my favorite things from her was she got up in front of the class and she just goes, "I just want to apologize for Jar Jar Binks. That was an accident. It wasn't. <laughs> it didn't. I didn't mean for it to happen. It was a sketch. Like it was really really funny to see, hear how some of those characters came to life." That's funny. Yeah. Um, so how many times have have uh, people at businesses tried to kill you for coming in and trying to get to know them and meet them? Um, like if you dived or, you know, battle axes, halberds. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went to a couple of video game studios out in California to try to try that same strategy and see if I could just, you know, uh, as the industry says, you know, get your foot in the door. Uh -huh. And um, one in particular that my wife and I went to made a couple of my favorite video games. And uh, I thought very, very highly of them. And I walked in and there were two solid glass doors. There was a camera on one side and a phone. And, you know, the title of the, the company up front. And I knocked you, on the door. Can you, name the, can you name the companies? Uh, do you want me to? I, I yeah, I mean, well. like, unless unless you did something that's oh, no, 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 get no. you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. I didn't <laughs> toilet paper or any building for not letting me come okay. in. No, High Moon Studios was one of them that I went to. They did uh, the Transformers, the uh, Fall of Cybertron series, and I absolutely love that video game. I love the artwork, and um, I wanted to go meet some of the people just see if I could talk to somebody, and I. Uh, yeah, there was a little like printout sign up of the phone that said, you know, pick up the call for you know, questions or for reception. 
And I walked up, picked up the phone and just said, hey, I'm an artist, I'm a, a student at UVU and I would really like to, to talk to someone or take them out to lunch if it's possible. And um, then the, you hear a little buzz, the doors open and a lady comes walking out and sits me down at the little table in the front and just says, hi, I'm from HR, what can I help you with? I said, well, I'd really like to talk to somebody from um, you know, your art department. Is there anybody that's available that wants to go out to lunch? And she goes, you know, sorry, you know, we can't really do that. And I, I was bold enough to say, you know, could I could just, you know, pop in there and just say hi and just say thanks. And she goes, no, you know, for liability or for, uh, um, privacy reasons and we can't allow you to do that. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming in though. And she kind of just walked back into the office and well, that was fun. So she was, she was paid. That was one of her duties was to be the gatekeeper and, and make right. sure that people like you don't get in there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And at that instance, I probably did look like the scary evil person, <laughs> like trying to come in for all of their secrets. <laughs> and, uh, that were, no, that wasn't the case at all. Um, I mean, I've been to other places like magic, the gathering, um, and just walking in off the street and saying, Hey, I'd like to talk to one of your recruiters. I'd like to talk to, uh, just anybody that's here. And, um, the problem was that, with that, was that a tour? Or Wizards um, of the Coast, or uh, I think it was yeah, Wizards of, the Wizards of the Coast, yeah, up yeah. in Washington, yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, the problem with that strategy is, I found sometimes you won't find the people that you need, yeah. especially if you're going around noon or one o'clock, because mm. um, everyone's off to lunch. So I'll go walking in, and we wait for about forty-five minutes, and then, you know the studio is really, really cool. There's artwork everywhere. There's sculptures, and um, I asked to talk to one of the recruiters, and he's out to lunch. Hmm. And so it's either wait and see if I can you know, talk to him or you know, come back another time or schedule another time where I can come meet with him. But they were really you know, fantastic. They gave me a bunch of magic cards and a couple of uh, books and um, said, hey, thanks. For, really think, appreciate you coming by. And um, a lot better experience there than you know, at, uh, some of the others that uh, you know, I just try to walk in off the street. Most of the time, I find it difficult to get people on the phone. You try calling, yeah. and if they don't know who you are, it's it's tough to you know pull them away from their workload and and uh, uh, ask them for a favor or ask them right. if you can just meet them. So you've had to be somewhat tenacious, and uh, you and it hasn't always paid off, right? So so sometimes no. you can chalk some of these efforts up to failures. Oh, absolutely, and a, a lot of those I learned what to say, what not to say. Uh, good strategy for getting in contact with people, um, making sure that people are going to be there before <laughs> you walk in and not just waste your time, but um, you know, have a good reason for you know, wanting to talk to a specific person or doing my research beforehand and knowing names, events, uh, pieces uh, that they've done in the past. Um, Cause it makes people feel really good when you, you know, they get recognized for stuff that they've done in the past. Mm. So yeah, that's kind of a you know an easy way to butter them up and say, hey, I really like this. I love this. Can you talk more about this? And mm -hmm. and then um, some of the books that I've been reading this past year, uh, uh, one of Gary Vaynerchuk's books, Jab 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 Right Hook, is uh, you know a fantastic uh, book. Um, I'm still working through it right now, and uh, he talks about uh, give, 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 and then ask. So it's uh, it comes down to um, not immediately i mean you see this all the time on i mean i see it all the time on on instagram i have people asking me uh hey can you do this for me or hey can you share my stuff or hey can you review my portfolio or hey can you do this and this and this and your initial reaction is well i don't know who you are yeah i'm i'm uh, i'm sorry like I, i'd love to help well and i think i think all of us have um responded to someone like that and we've yeah. we've invested and then there's been there's been no communication back afterwards. Yeah. Um, and so I think like those interactions train us that, you know, maybe this person isn't, isn't really committed right. um, to, to doing this and I might be wasting my time. And I think that we're all sort of guarded against our time you know, with our time. And so, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. No, oh, I, I completely agree with that. And now, um, you know, doing some more work and trying to find more time to do work. It's my time is incredibly uh, valuable and um, I can't, you know, I, I'm more than happy and more than willing to invest it in someone that's actually serious about it. 
And uh, I mean, comic, Salt Lake Comic Con is a great example. Yeah, people come up and they bring up their sketchbooks, they bring up their portfolio, and they're just dying and ready and willing for you know that advice or that feedback. Right. And those are the types of people, like even like some of the people that you've seen at Comic Cons that were just absolutely amazing. Um, I remember one kid that you met, uh, I think it was at Vegas Comic Con, that had a sketchbook just full of, of uh, artillery and tanks and just had amazing perspective and amazing detail, great line work. And um, it's you know stuff like that that kind of uh, puts butterflies in your stomach. Wow, this is really cool. I, I would love to like be the, the driving factor in you know, getting you to that professional level. Yeah. So um, now you are, you're not a stranger to adversity either. I don't, I want people to know that you've, you've gone through some pretty hard stuff in your life. And I, if you don't want to talk about that, that's totally fine. But no, I, I'm not afraid to talk about that at all. Um, honestly, I, I feel like sharing that part of my life, you know, that's my story. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I don't want to pretend like my life has been this, you know, amazing, wonderful event. Um, it's been good, definitely. I've had you know good parents, and I've had good siblings that have uh, you know helped me um, little bits here and there, and I really appreciate them. But you know, it's just been the past couple of years. Uh, you, know, um, you know, getting into UVU was you know a big uh, hassle. I mean, I was married once before, and um, my first wife wasn't super thrilled at the idea of me being an artist. Uh, I was actually an engineering student up at the, the U. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I was a mechanic for 10 years. Uh, I worked in uh, motorcycle shops and I worked in uh, tow truck shops and car dealerships and um, wanted to be a mechanical engineer. And, uh, realized while I was taking those classes, a lot of math classes that I was doodling during that time, and I wasn't thinking about you know, creating in, like engines or uh, new mechanical objects. It was, I was thinking about aliens and I was thinking about uh, fairy tales and I was thinking about knights and dragons. And um, so I decided to take a uh, art class up at the U. And as I was doing that, I was spending way more time on this one art class for this little three credit art class than I was on my other calculus classes, my engineering classes. And uh, that teacher approached me and said, uh, so what are you doing in school? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineering student. I'm in the program at, at the U. And um, he goes, well, you've improved so much over the course of the semester. I don't think you should be in engineering anymore. You're obviously spending way more time on this than you are on your studies. And I really was like my math classes and everything were starting to my grades were starting to suffer because I was spending so much time on, on the art. And so I came home one day and I changed my major and I said, honey, I'm I'm, I'm going to be an art major. And she goes, well, I thought I was going to be the wife of a wealthy engineer, not the wife of a poor artist. Oh, and yeah. So it's a great start to that to that uh, new career change. Wow. And uh, she was was supportive ish. Um, it was kind of half hearted. Uh, a lot of those aspects, um, I would try to invest in opportunities or invest in programs or online tutorials, and she wasn't all for that. She just thought it was a fling that eventually I'd get my head back on straight and I'd get back into the engineering program. But as soon as I got out, it was you know, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't like coming home, like covered in grease. I didn't like um, smelling like smoke or gasoline. And um, this way, it was a way for me to express, you know, who I was and a way for me to explore new worlds. And um, I, I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. And, you know, coming down to UVU and getting into the programs down there and meeting you and meeting you know, Howard Fulmer and Perry Stewart, um, I just saw how intense it was and I loved it from the start. Like that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do. And, um, hearing, you know, these other professionals come in, you know, Jake Parker and Howard Lyon come in and talk about their experiences with Marvel or with, uh, magic gathering or doing portraits. Um, it just, it, it fascinated me and I love interacting with people because you get to see a real side of those people. Um, you get to really see who they are. 
Yeah. And that's really genuine to me. I, I love that. It's so fun to see people you know, light up like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite character. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I never thought of it this way. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great environment down there for sure. And I actually miss, I, I stopped teaching there last year. Um, oh, that's right. I remember I, you telling me about that. I just didn't have time to, keep, to continue doing that. It was more of a, um, it was more for the fun of it than anything else. Um, well, I'm I just really saw, glad you did. What's that? I said, I'm really glad you did. Because I got to meet you. You're really glad I quit? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really glad that you did, that you taught there because, I mean, yeah. it, it lined up perfectly with when I was there. Yeah, it was fun. In fact, I spoke there last night in the class. Um, I just wanted to let people that are watching this live know that I am watching the chat. And if you have questions for Scotty as we move through um, this, um, I'll try to get work them in if they, if they apply to what we're talking about. Yeah, um, and I'm really not scary, I promise. This is just... <laughs> and if you've missed the beginning, we talk about Scotty's scary face. His, my, his... my demeanor. <laughs> um, okay, so then you and I met at, um, at Comic-Con, and you told me an amazing story. And I'm like, okay, I have to have this on the, the YouTube channel because it's, uh, it's unexpected, and it's, it's, it's really more of what um, – I think we should be trying to to do as illustrators, and it's the reason that I named the this video the wrong way to interview for an illustration job is because that's basically the right way. So, so go ahead and, and tell the story that you told me. Sure. Um, so uh, I had you know a couple other life altering events where no, go, go, go ahead yeah no, i don't want to rush you into it so oh no 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 i think it's uh, logical uh, you go, go wherever you want to go well i just feel like um that the, these events in my life in the past really helped push me to make those decisions and to step outside of my comfort zone because i was so bogged down by fear and letting it control my decision making and not putting myself out there i was so afraid what other people thought for the longest time and um my you know first wife and I we ended up being divorced and uh, six months later she actually passed away and you know there was a whole series of you know drama that went along with that and um, I wasn't able to stay for her funeral her family ushered me out and like, pushed me out and um, her mom pulled me aside and told me I would never amount to anything that I was worthless and that uh, um, you know good luck with the rest of my life essentially and. Wow. Uh, I was trying to be supportive. Uh, I brought her favorite flowers, and I mean, even still, they, they just kind of you know pushed me and my parents out out of the building. Um, after that, like I had you know a severe um, uh, time of depression, and uh, I just tried to work. I tried to put all of my my time and effort and energy into the artwork at UVU. And because of that, I wasn't sleeping very much. You know, I was getting you know about an hour and a half of sleep, and I was drinking energy drinks like they were candy. I was having four energy drinks a day, Dude. and right, right. Well, I, <laughs> oh, that was <sighs> caffeine's great. Don't get me wrong, but at <laughs> that amount, like I was, I was asking for trouble. And I, uh, not too long after that, um, I ended up having a stroke. And oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, my body just kind of said, nope, enough's enough. You're pushing us way too hard. And they hit the reset button. And uh, my girlfriend, so my now, my second wife, uh, was very, um, uh, she was there. She, I was very fortunate to have her there because when it happened, it was, you know, the weirdest thing. You know, the whole right side of my body went numb. I couldn't talk. I had to. I had to. I, didn't, I never. I, no one ever told me about this. I guess I. I lost connection somehow. Well, no, I, it wasn't something I. I walked around and said, "Hey, everybody!" Like, no, nah, I'm a part of the stroke club. Like, huh. no. um, I, I was taking Perry's figure drawing class at the time, and his class was very, very intense. And um, I mentioned it to him when I, I came back. It took me about two weeks to kind of get my feet back underneath me and to get back into the swing of things and. Um, I was very, very lucky. I was very fortunate to, to not have anything more severe than um, what I had. And uh, from there, like laying in the hospital, like wondering what, what is going on. They're putting me through every and all tests that you can possibly go through. I didn't have insurance at the time. Mm. Um, it was 
it was really, really scary. Just wondering, like, great, how how's this? You know, how can it get any worse? Um, but while I was laying there, one of the, the thoughts that came through my head was, why why am I so afraid? Like, there is, I mean, I, I could have died. Like, I could have, um, you know, my, my work could have been over. That would have been it. And there were so many other things that I wanted to do and so many other things that I wanted to try and people that I wanted to meet. And um, it really opened my eyes that life is short and don't let it stop you from becoming who you want to become. Mm. Um, Aristotle said something really good, which was, we are what we repeatedly do. So excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And I realized that my habits weren't in the right spot. And that if I was gonna, you know, get better that I needed to change my habits and to change my decisions. So my wife knew uh, a couple of people out in San Diego and uh, she lived out there for a little while, served an LDS mission out there and um, got to know a few gentlemen that had connections in the art world. And uh, he invited us out to uh, San Diego Comic-Con a couple of times. And at first, the first time he did it, I was like, uh, no, I'm not really, uh, I don't really feel comfortable with that. And he asked again and same no, thing. No, why didn't you feel comfortable? I just didn't feel ready. Um, you know, working through, excuse me, working through uh, classes at UVU, I was basing everything that I did off of, you know, my comparison to other kids work. Mm. And uh, that was really, really intimidating too, to see so many other people that I didn't know their backgrounds or I didn't know their work history excel so much faster than I was, it was very, very intimidating. Mm -hmm. Thinking that, you know, I'm doing something wrong or, well, I'm not gonna work tonight because I know I'm not gonna catch them or I know I'm not gonna, you know, make a difference. And, you know, after the stroke, I, I just realized, you know what, it's not about them. Like, why should I worry about them when I need to worry about me? And I need to be better than I was yesterday. And that for me, that was like a game changer. It's a very, very basic like self-help type thing. But after that, it just kind of cleared the path for me. Like, oh, I need to get out of my own way and not allow fear to stop my decision making. Like, I don't care what anybody else thinks anymore. It's more, oh, well, I did this yesterday. Let's see if I can do it better today. Mm. And that led to that, you know, this gentleman asking the third time, hey, do you guys want to come out to San Diego Comic-Con? And again, my wife, you know, elbowing me in the stomach saying, hey, you, know, you could do this. So, okay, all right, let's do it. Let's just, you know, take what I have and we'll, we'll see what happens. And I was able to go and enjoy San Diego Comic-Con. And it was, you know, an amazing experience. I mean, it, it was really crazy to walk around the convention center like this, you know, making sure that you don't bump into anybody. And, um, because <laughs> of the sheer numbers of people. Oh, there's so many people, but there's, it's. <laughs> such a great environment um, you know, around all those creatives and uh, you know, getting to see the Nickelodeon booths and Cartoon Networks and Blizzard, seeing, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, 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 seeing uh, TNT and all of these great you know, movie uh, producers. And um, from there, uh, the gentleman actually directed me upstairs. He said that the one condition that I had to come is he said I had to bring my portfolio. So then he pushed me upstairs to, to the sales pavilion and they're up at the main desk. They have a kiosk where you walk up to a computer and you enter your information into this computer and you uh, um, pick the companies that you want to interview for. Mm -hmm. And then 30 minutes before the, the interview starts, the, the computer randomly generates a list of 25 names. And if you're not on that list, like you don't get an interview. And oh, because because there's just too many people that want an interview. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a really easy way to like filter out you know, you know a bunch of people. The problem is is with that is you can get rid of a lot of great people that could do a lot of great things for the company just because it's it's lottery based. Mm -hmm. But I was fortunate enough to make it onto every list that I put in for. So mm. there was Aspen Comics, uh, Lucas Films, there was uh, Tonka Toys, uh, Nickelodeon was another one of them. And uh, now I, you, have, just to be clear for everybody, you, you didn't uh, go through animation. You, you were an illustration major. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, the illustration major, art and design, um, you know, sequential arts, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I taken one, let's see, two, two animation classes. So like a flash animation class and, uh, like a 3d modeling class or something like that. Um, but it just, it never really, you know, caught my interest. It was, you know, I love comics or I love, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do, um, the illustration side of it. And, uh, that just never was really an option. I just never took it seriously. Mm -hmm. But I just thought, well, why not? Maybe they could use my skills, or maybe I could. You know, we could benefit each other in some way. And um, and that's typically what happened with like Lucas Films or with Aspen Comics. Was I you know, showed them my portfolio, and they said, well, we're not really. This this is not the kind of stuff that we're looking for. Like you're you're decent, you're good, but you know we need more of like what what t-shirt designs, that's what Lucas Films were looking for at the time was t-shirt designs and <laughs> um, Aspen Comics uh, talked to me about having like an actual, a physical portfolio because I brought my iPad with me and just had digital pages mm. inside my, my uh, iPad and they liked the traditional stuff. They said they wanted to see the 11 by 17 pages inked and penciled and mm -hmm. um, a lot of that was just because lighting. They really liked the the natural lights that they have in the sales pavilion, and they wanted to use that on the actual medium. Mm -hmm. um, but as we were, I, you know, I wonder just just in thinking of this from trying to put myself in the employer's shoes for yeah. a second, I, I wonder if another reason is that um, you know, if you have the original artwork in front of you, then that's pretty. I mean, that links it to you rather than if you just had some images on an iPad, maybe you didn't do them. I don't know. I wonder if sure. that crosses their mind, you know? No, absolutely. That makes perfect sense that they want to see that you're capable of, you know, mastering the, the medium traditionally before digitally. I mean, that was something that you and the other professors at UVU stated a lot was we want you guys to work traditionally first before you go digital because it's just another medium. Yeah. And... Yeah. Josh, Jocelyn's saying it, it would be scary to carry around large original pieces in a crowded space like that. Yeah, it would. It'd be inconvenient too. Yes, it, and that's <laughs> the big reason why I brought my digital stuff is because I didn't want to carry around this, you know, just giant portfolio, you know, wondering if someone's going to squish it or step on it. But everyone there was very, very nice, and um, it's not like what you see in the movies where people are climbing over each other to, you know, get to these interviews. Yeah. Um, most of it, well, I was, I was, able, my wife and I were able to be there when the doors first opened, and that was really scary because you get the people that are at the front of the line in the convention center, and they just charge in and they just grab. It's like Black Friday; they just grab mm -hmm. all the free stuff, and <laughs> um, that that was a little sk sketchy. But after that, people were very, very nice and. Um, uh, security was very, very nice, very willing to help and very willing to like make sure that people stay out of your way so you can make it make it up to the sales pavilion. And mm -hmm. um, it's not like you have to like navigate your way through the convention center to get up there. It's like you walk in the door, you go up the escalator, and you're there. So it's it's not like bringing something now that I know that I've you know now that I've been there, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a lot more comfortable taking some you know big eleven by seventeen um, sequential art boards up there and mm -hmm. um, being okay with it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so when I was sitting there waiting for my name to be called for Nickelodeon, um, there were two booths. So there's one for Nickelodeon animation, there's one for Nickelodeon in the internships. And no, wait, there's one, there's, there's one for internships and the, what was the other one? One was for the studio itself. So they were, they were there, um, looking for uh, new animators and new artists and I interviewed with them. Okay, and gotcha. that uh, you know didn't didn't go very well because I'm an illustrator, not an animator, and so they wanted to see turnarounds and they wanted to see mm -hmm. props and they wanted to see um, layouts and I didn't really have that kind of stuff. It was more finished illustrations, and so uh, I sat back down and I'm kind of looking to the left and looking to the right of me, and um, we're sitting in this big long row of chairs with these cubicles on either side, and. Uh, I look at my wife and I go, honey, we're all, all of us are artists. Like we're all trying to get the same job. How many people? Um, Just roughly sitting there waiting for their interview. 
probably 40 or 50. Like it, oh, was, wow. it was quite a few. And there were chairs just <laughs> back to back. So there was one row facing one way of cubicles and there was another row facing the opposite way. And uh, at one point, like uh, they, all the chairs were full. So it was standing room only. And I mean, if you got to sit down, great. If not, then you just kind of had to chill and wait for an open seat. Um, but as I was sitting there, I, I realized that none of us were drawing. Like that was something, you know, you especially with uh, their sketchbooks was a huge thing. Just uh, you'll always be drawing. I mean, even Don Siegmiller, when he was there, mm -hmm. talked a lot about like draw all the time, draw in class, draw when you, whenever you get the opportunity. And one of my favorite things that Don said was, if anybody has a problem with that, tell them to come talk to me. <laughs> and so what I was doing you know, classes at UVU and I was, um, you know, drawing, you know, you get these like weird stares from people like, are you really paying attention? And I'd have to explain like, this helps me concentrate. This helps me think I'm, I'm trying to internalize what you're saying. So this is good. This is, you know, it's a win-win. And, uh, most of the time that would work out. But with this, while I was sitting there waiting, um, I just pulled out my iPad and I started to draw the interviewer. And I, I didn't have a whole lot of time. I had probably 25 or 30 minutes or so. And mm -hmm. um, uh, before, when they called my name up, um, I you know, brought up my iPad and I said, okay, before we get started, how did I do? And I showed it to her and, and I was thinking like, oh, that's cute. Thank you. That was my initial thought process, which they were just going to be like, oh, that's, you know, that's really sweet. Thank you. Sit down. Let's you know, conduct the interview. It turned out that uh, she'd never been drawn before. And she goes, oh my gosh, that's me. That is so cool. Like, holy cow, can you send that to me? I said, yeah, can I have your email address? I'd be happy to send that to you. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, absolutely. And she you know, gave me a little card that she filled out with her email address and all, all, everything on it. And um, uh, the interview I felt went really, really well and uh, it, uh, we were able to talk about my you know, experience at UVU and some of the chalk art festivals that I've participated in and um, the uh, Grimm Brothers fairy tale uh, the trip that I got to go on with Howard and mm -hmm. um, retail the Grimm's Brothers fairy tales and, uh, and you know that was really that it was like oh thanks for your time really appreciate it and you know, we went our separate ways. Was she kept in touch with me? This, I'll be honest. This, I was really, really bad at this. Um, I didn't keep in, you know, good contacts with her, and mm -hmm. I think that was just because, um, you know, it was a bad habit of mine that you'd meet with somebody once, and then those feelings would uh, get in the way. That oh, well, they think this or they they think that mm -hmm. about me. They think I was stupid. I, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to bug them. I don't want to disturb them. And um, she she was actually uh, on top of the ball. Like they were looking for people to fill these positions in their internship program, and she thought you were uh, hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's let's go with that. I think that was that's probably the best best uh, description. <laughs> but but uh, a couple months later, like I I, you know, I come home at that point. You know, I hadn't thought too much of it, and I'm like, oh, okay, that was a great experience. But you know, it's back to the drawing board, literally, and. Um, I got a phone call uh, while I was working at my job at the grocery store and it was her and she goes, Hey, was just thinking about you looking over this image again. And I really appreciate, thank you so much. And um, I just wanted to ask you, Hey, we have a position open in our internship program and we want to ex extend you the offer. And it was one of those, hello, are you still there? <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to process this. What did you say? And she goes, well, this is so-and-so at Nickelodeon. We want you to come out for our internship program. We have this spot available for you. Do you want it? And I go, absolutely, I do. What, what do I need to do? And she goes, well, it starts in two weeks, <laughs> and, and I need you to know your answer by tomorrow. Wow. Whoa. Uh, at the time, I was working full-time. I was in school full-time, and I had another internship with a video game company in Salt Lake and uh, excuse me, Bountiful. I didn't know that part. And yeah. Yeah. That was, that was uh, crazy. You probably a, told me, but I'm, I'm a bad listener. 
<laughs> no, you're good. You're fine. <laughs> With as many people as you interview, I'm sure there's you know, tons of stuff. That, uh, That's my wife. I'm a bad listener. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I panicked. So I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I hung up the phone. And I just you know sit, sat back in my chair and just, what am I going to do? Oh, my gosh. Like, you know, a million ideas and, and uh, emotions are flooding in. And I actually just told her no. You know, that's way too much, you know, for my to ask my wife to you know, go out of her way to let me do that or to, to quit her job so we can go out to California and do that. And so I said, no, you know what? I'm just going to ask. Let's ask. Let's see what people say first. Don't don't like shut it down here. Put it out there and let other people make those decisions. If you don't give them the opportunity, they're, they're not going to say yes or no. Mm -hmm. So I call my wife and she goes, oh, my gosh, honey, that's that's fantastic. Uh, what do you think? And so we, we talked through it and uh, she said, go, like, I, I want you to have this experience. And I said, well, what about you? She's like, I'll stay here. It's okay. I'll be your cheerleading section. I'll make sure that everything's held down back here at the fort, but I want you to go and I want you to gain those uh, experiences and gain that knowledge. And it's like, okay, all right. So wall one is, is taken care of. Let's go to the next one. So I called my boss and told my boss everything was going on. Um, I said, I have this great opportunity for an internship. What do you think? And he said, go. Like, that's that's fantastic. Like, this is a dream come true. Like, go. I said, well, if it doesn't work out, like, I'll, I'll, I'd like to come back. <laughs> and he goes, well, I'll save your spot for you. Like, you'll have a place to come back when if uh, things don't work out at Nickelodeon. Well, but, that speaks volumes just, just in and of itself right there. Because well, if, said, said, if he said, if he said no, then it would it would look like he was trying to get rid of you. Like, oh, right. finally, no, I'm getting Scotty. No, exactly. No, exactly. That's exactly right. So that was another like uh, you know patch of fear that I had to work through. That uh, maybe <clears throat> if he didn't say no, maybe he'll just want me out of here. But uh, we had a, a great relationship, and he uh, he was a fantastic boss. I loved him to death, and um, I called uh, the internship coordinator that I was with, and. Um, I called my teachers, so I called Howard and I called Kent Christensen. And, mm. um, I was actually working for the UVU newspaper as their illustrator, and um, I was stressed out that all one of them was going to say no, you can't do this, and just you know shatter that whole dream. But uh, every single one of them said go. Like this is the whole reason why you're here is to have these opportunities and to take care of these opportunities, and. It, it was the, the craziest, excuse me, the craziest thing in the world to have all of this just fit, all of it fall into place to make it happen. And had I just said no, I, I wouldn't have known and yeah. I would have driven myself crazy. Oh, well, what if, what if, what if? And I didn't want that, you know, to you know, affect me later in life. So how did you, how did, let's talk about school first, because I know, I can, I can, I, I, I would imagine Howard being really okay with you going, um, but at the same time, there's, there's like the, the, the school rules of like, you know, leaving things incomplete and things like that. And Ken, I was in Ken's class last night, so, and I, I would totally imagine him saying go, but how did you handle? Did he not say go? No, 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 he did. No, no, yeah. no. Kent, Kent was fantastic. I was actually in Kent's class uh, last week. Oh, cool. Talking about the same thing. I mean, he's he's amazing. He and I have a lot of parallels in our lives, and yeah, um, we uh, uh, they worked it out to where I could still do schoolwork and. Um, still oh, so you so you, did you have to st still work on your schoolwork while you're out there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it wasn't. Uh, well, we'll just give you a free pass. No, I had to. I had to do quite a bit of schoolwork while I was out there, and mm -hmm. um, uh, so I call the lady back. And say I'm in, like I'm I'm ready to go. And she goes, okay, well it's a paid internship. I'm like, great, that's fantastic. And she said, but there's no uh, like places to stay, so you have to figure out your own place to stay. And California is just crazy, ridiculous, expensive. Mm -hmm. And to, in order to survive while I was out there, I had to um, find Airbnbs to stay at and just bounce from Airbnb to Airbnb just so I could afford mm -hmm. to stay out there. And I was eating like Taco Bell and Del Taco like every every night, <laughs> just to afford to you know stay out there. And um, how long was, was the internship? Uh, it was just over four months, I think. Okay. Yeah, 
So it was from September to middle of January. So, okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, I was a part of their community efforts program uh, when I was out there and they had opportunities to draw, but most of it was just for schools. So um, they'd give a shirt to wear that had Nickelodeon printed on the back of them. And so as a representative of Nickelodeon, I got to go to these schools, schools in the inner city, downtown LA and downtown Burbank and um, work with at-risk kids. And that was, that was an amazing experience. And it, uh, um, it was a life-changing experience. It was really cool to see those kids that didn't have a whole lot. They were still just super happy and how much you lit up their world by drawing SpongeBob or by drawing um, Aang from the Avatar, The Last Airbender. Mm -hmm. And they, they taught me a lot about myself and what's important and um, that you know, your circumstances don't, make you who you are it's your decisions like it's what you do every day and uh you know throughout that this internship i uh kept a sketchbook so i i fill my sketchbook up and that was you know some of the requirements in in howard's and kent's class was keep a sketchbook and so i had a couple sketchbooks on my desk and um uh in some of my downtime i would draw and my boss came up to me and just kind of poked his head up over my cubicle and was like hey what are you doing I go, I'm just doodling, just drawing. And it was around this same time, around this this time last year. Yeah, I was doing Inktober. Mm -hmm. And I uh, drew a Ninja Turtle and just ended up with a ballpoint pen. And he looked at that and said, hey, well, why don't you clean that up and put it in Photoshop? And we'll turn it into coloring book pages. And my eyes got wide, like, are, are you serious? Like, really? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to do this. And so, uh, I you know put a couple other drawings in of like Cosmo Wanda and SpongeBob, um, Invader Zim, and then Raphael from Ninja Turtles, and it was the coolest thing to see my artwork for these um, IPs getting printed out and used for coloring book pages as a representative of Nickelodeon. That oh, was cool. that was so cool, and um, after that, it just I just kept up with the sketchbook. So eventually Inktober kind of fell to the wayside because I was so busy with schoolwork and I was so busy with um, Nickelodeon work that I, I couldn't keep up with it. Right. So uh, after that, I was just, I was sketching on the Wacom tablet that they had there and same thing. They just said, hey, we have a, a, uh, a inner city arts class coming in. Can you do a banner for them? And in their new Nickelodeon building, They've got this massive, I think it's a hundred and something, 170 something square inches or something of a, it's a large TV, a very, very big TV. Mm -hmm. And they said that they would like to take some of my artwork and put it up on that TV. So when people come in, that would be the first thing they see. And at first, like those, those you know, demons and devils, you know, pop up inside of you and just go, uh, no, like you don't want, you're not good enough yet. <laughs> I just said, you know what? Like, let's, you guys go. I'm here. Like, they want me to be here, so I'm gonna do my best. And um, Nickelodeon was a great experience too. That they said it, it, this internship is what you make it. So if you don't talk to anybody, that's not our fault. You have the directory, you have the history of the company, and if you don't go out of your way to figure out who you need to talk to, then it's not our fault. Like we. That's really cool. That's, it was. Uh, that's a great attitude for them to have because that's um, I mean that that makes the internship worth it if if you're into it you know definitely and I, I really try to take advantage of it I was meeting with storyboard artists and layout artists um, I met with uh, um, artists and the art director from Spongebob um, uh, they would host every week they would host uh, executive lunches so I got to meet executive producers and I got to meet uh, um, creators and uh, that was probably the coolest thing it's just getting to meet these people that you've heard so much about and you think they just walk on water and realize they're human just like you and I they're human they have the same thoughts they have the same doubts but the difference is they they try and they 
um, put themselves out there and they don't let people tell them no, they say, okay, well, you said no. All right, well, I'm going to go figure out another way to do it. Like, you're not going to stop me. So that was very inspirational and really, really eye-opening as well. Um, but, you know, as, as the course of this internship went, I, I just kept drawing and I kept finding time to draw and I would actually stay well past the closing time. So I, I usually stayed till midnight or one o'clock every single night just wow. so I could absorb the energy that was there. And most everyone left about, you know, six, seven, eight o'clock and um, Nickelodeon, they didn't have a schedule. They would, they said, as long as you get your work done, this is the deadline. We're going to check on you at this day, this week, this day, this week, and this day next week, just to make sure things are processing along, but you can come and go as you please. Wow. And that was, it was no stress, very laid back. Um, they had uh, uh, Wii's and Xboxes and Playstations at these cubicles. So you could <laughs> get up out of your cubicle, walk around, and you could say, hey, I challenge you to a Mario Kart race. And you could sit down, you could play Mario Kart for a little bit and kind of detox and de-stress. And, mm -hmm. No, now if you do that in Mario Kart in your, your head, then uh, they'll catch up. A turtle shell will come out of nowhere and get you. Yeah, so you, you do need to be careful because it could be very, very competitive. And they had a, a screening room there. Speaking of that, they had a, a screening room, a giant screening room that uh, we would play Super Smash Brothers on. So in, in a theater, essentially, we got to play video games, which was wow. just, it was so cool, a really cool experience. Um, but as the you know, internship progressed on, um, you know, constantly taking notes and meeting these people, setting up lunches. The same thing I would do when I, when, you know, that I got the job at Harmon's. I would call people up or email them and just say, hey, I'm an intern. Um, I've really loved your work so far. Um, I would stop people on IMDB and uh, Facebook and just say, hey, I, I saw this. I really enjoyed this. Do you mind if I take you out to lunch? And most of them would come back and say, oh, you don't need to do that. I'm happy to help. Like, sure, I'll, I'll be, I'd go ahead and meet you. And I would always buy them lunch because... I always felt like uh, it was, I, I didn't want to just take, take, take from everybody. I, want, I also wanted to give and mm -hmm. show them that their time was valuable and not waste their, not, I'm not here to waste their time. Like I'm investing in them as well. And um, they, everyone was so nice. Everyone was so stinking nice. Um, I, I, you know, out here in Utah, we, we don't see a lot of that. And we assume that people nice people. Yeah, that people aren't all that nice out in California, <laughs> especially in Hollywood. Oh, that gotcha. those people are, uh, you know, stuck up and they're, you know, on, you know, they need to get off their high horse. And when I was out there, everyone was so nice, so humble, and just just great to work with. And um, uh, even uh, you know, a lot of the creators, like they have the creators out there and the executive producers out there that you can, you know, go talk to them or go ask them questions and. Um, you know, I met the creator of the new, uh, excuse me, the uh, assistant, let's see, co sorry, co-executive producer of the new Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Andy Siriano. Uh, he also did Samurai Jack mm. for, for Cartoon Network. And he's, he's an incredible, incredible artist, incredible person, very nice, very humble, very down to earth. And um, it was so crazy to watch him as you bring a sketchbook piece to him. He would lay a sticky note over the top of it, make corrections, and hand it back to you within you know, 20 or 30 seconds and say, okay, now go figure out what I did. Oh. And that was just, oh, okay, well, I just watched you do it, so I should be able to figure it out. And he'd go and spend half a day trying to figure out what he did, come back, and he'd lay another sticky note over the top of it, make corrections, say, okay, this is out of perspective. This is, you know, these proportions are wrong. Your line quality is not as, as good as it should be here. And, okay, now go figure it out. Wow. Oh. Well, and, and that really reminded me of you because in, in class, you would say, okay, draw now. Here, this is your assignment. We have a, a cat king, I think was one of the things that we uh -huh. have. <laughs> and um, draw, draw a cat king. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't have a whole lot of time to get, you know, build up reference. So like what Jake Parker said, you know, building your visual library and studying beforehand so I can you know, access that information when I need it. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to to do it, and then you know have you throw it up on the screen and you know draw over the top of it. That's so valuable, and I really appreciated that because it showed me what I, I could do to make things better, and to go find things that are like that so I could study it. And uh, same thing with Nickelodeon. Like you'd bring, I'd bring a sketchbook out or I'd bring my portfolio out. And when I was working with the layout artists for the backgrounds for on SpongeBob, 
they were, they did the same thing. They would um, look at my stuff and then just say, Hey, look, maybe if you try this or go study this person, go study this person. This is the direction that you want to take it. Cause this is what helped me. Mm. And SpongeBob super unique because it's almost all done traditionally still. Um, the backgrounds are all hand painted. The, uh, um, uh, yeah, it's all done with uh, like cell art. So the mm -hmm. cellophane and the cell paint, and mm -hmm. um, it was it was so cool to see all of that come to life, and you get that valuable valuable feedback because we as artists we live or die on feedback, and you know going to, when, first when I was at school I was so intimidated and I fell into the trap of uh, waiting to the last second to do projects. And that was mostly because I was intimidated and mostly because I didn't want to be, uh, you know, pounded for what I was working on. And I, I, I would just think to myself, oh, well, I'm going to get pounded anyway. So what's the point in putting all this extra time and effort and energy into something when I could just do something right at the last second? I can go okay. hang, out, hang out and play games and do all this other stuff anyway. Where at Nickelodeon, when I was showing these people this stuff, they go, this this is, it looks really fast. It's really quick. Did you not take your time on this? And no, you, I had to be honest because I couldn't just, you know, try to fib my way out of you know some of the best artists in the world looking at my stuff and saying, you look like you're rushed on this. Did you spend enough time on this? And um, it really opened my eyes to, wow, you know, putting a lot more time and effort and energy into prep work, into college studies, into sketchbook, like it all brought all the lessons that you guys taught us together. Mm -hmm. And made it's, everything started making sense, because then I had you know Perry in the back of my head and Howard and you and um, you know keep your sketchbook, keep your sketchbook, keep your sketchbook, and <laughs> um, it's just you know that sketchbook really really helped a ton in opening up, up opportunities. And uh, I mean even now, I mean I'll go to Walmart or I'll go to um, you know a public place and I'll sit and I'll draw people. And there's some of the most interesting characters that you find at Walmart or 7-Eleven or, uh, you know, these public places. And people will come up and they're like, hey, what are you doing? I saw you staring at me for, you know, 30 minutes. <laughs> like, what are you doing? And he, You're a creeper. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got, that, I got that look. Maybe, maybe I, you know, I need to wear a mask or something. What I do, oh, maybe that won't help. That's probably a bad idea. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, so, I promise I was just drawing you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I'm not trying to like steal your soul or anything like it's fine um most people will ask for the drawing or i'll give it to them and uh there was one instance where i was at a tire shop getting my tires rotated and had a gentleman sit across from me he was a construction worker contractor had the like bright yellow vest on had a big old beard hair slicked back and i just looked at him and said, oh, he'd be really fun to draw so I, you know i found a ballpoint pen pulled out a, an extra sheet of paper and I drew him and as he got up to leave, I tore it out and said, Hey, you know, just, this is, this is for you. He looked at it and he goes, Oh, that's why you were staring at me. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is cool. Thank you so much. And, um, it's actually opened doors to other opportunities that I wouldn't normally have considered. Like a lot of them ask, Hey, do you do tattoos? Like, well, I no, I've, I've never like drawn for a tattoo. It's like, well, Hey, well, what do you think of this? And it, uh, you know, gives you more experience from creating that opportunity. But all I was doing was drawing. Yeah. And then I disrupted their day to say, hey, I want to do, uh, this is something nice for you that I wanted to do. And it, it really makes a huge difference because before I was so concerned about each individual drawing that I was doing that I was attached to it. And um I was afraid of it getting destroyed because like, oh, you know, I, I spent so much time and energy into this. I don't want it to get wrecked. And that's not the point. The point is what you, how, or as an artist, your, what am I trying to say? Your abilities are most important. Your ability to be able to draw. If you can draw it once, you can draw it again. And uh, I stopped caring so much about the drawing itself, but more so about my ability and my ability to see and my ability to interpret and to communicate. And it's uh, it's exciting when you make those changes or make those um, you know take those new experiences and apply them, and then you turn around and show it to somebody, 
Because there's a big difference when somebody looks at it and goes, oh, oh, that's that's nice versus, oh, my gosh, wow, this is so cool. And, <laughs> and that's what I, I really, really like to see is the people that you know have that energy because it's an authentic, it's a genuine emotion. Yeah. And I love seeing that because you get to see people as they really are, not, you know, this this mask that they wear all the time to pretend that they're tough or to pretend that they're um, – you're really doing something that they're really not. Mm -hmm. And uh, they let their walls down, they let their guard down because you give them something as a stranger. And you, people don't normally you know, give each other, you know, strangers something, especially, you know, something that they've spent, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of their time on. Yeah. And something else that I found at Nickelodeon was time is, is incredibly valuable. And if you give somebody your time, that's worth so much more than giving them money. Yeah, because you can't ever buying them lunch. I mean, I'm not, I'm not to put down the buying lunch thing, but you're absolutely right. The giving of your own personal time is so much more valuable, so much more meaningful. Yeah, and the the given the, the buying the lunch thing was, um, I guess, a way to appease my conscience. Well, and it's a good door opener. It's a good way to say I'm no, serious. Absolutely, absolutely, and. Um, it uh, really helps break the ice, and um, as you you know, get going talking, you get to see them you know in a a state where they're relaxed and they're not so stressed out about you know, work or you know family life or whatever. And um, it's just a, a, a way to find people in their genuine state. Yeah. Wow. So a couple things like uh, it, first um, like. How have all these connections, how do you see them playing out in the future? Because that's like, to me, it seems like that's the, the main reason for doing the, the internship is, is to make all these great connections. Absolutely. Um, so after the internship was over, a lot of those people went and applied to different studios. So now I have connections at DreamWorks. I have connections at Disney. I have connections at Pixar. I have connections at Cartoon Network. And it's, it's really a tight-knit group of people. And if you're a jerk, like that stuff gets out, like people talk and they associate you with, you know, not being a hard worker or not um, able to turn around something quickly or, you know, not being easy to work with in a team environment. And so if you're a jerk, you have to fake it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a jerk, then you better figure it out because the word will get around quick. Um, but yeah, no, no. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, making those connections, well, that was the biggest part of it. And then, you know, staying in touch with those people, um, sending them artwork every once in a while, uh, sending them text messages saying, hey, miss you, hope things are going great here. Here's a, you know, something I've been working on. Um, or here's an inspirational video. I sent a video out to a lot of the guys that I met that just said, hey, you're awesome. Don't forget you're awesome. And um, a lot of those, you know, positive motivational things have, have uh, really impacted me. And Sometimes it's nice to have somebody else say, hey, you're wonderful. Don't forget that you're amazing. And I think the world of you and you know, just keep doing what you're doing. Mm. Cool. So how the other question I had was, how do you I mean, we, all, we none of us start out drawing well. Right. So there's there's those there's the point where we're very self-conscious. And I'm going to speak for myself and probably for a lot of people that are listening now and that will listen to this later. Um, I was always very self-conscious to have people watch me draw. Uh huh. You know, like I, I didn't want them seeing my mistakes and my fumblings and scumblings and trying to figure stuff out. And it's, uh oh, it's not working out and it's not looking like the person I'm trying to draw. And I got the gesture wrong. And, um, and now they're looking at what I'm doing and someone's looking over my shoulder and I just want to rip this up. How do you get past that to where you can just be out in public and, you don't care if people are watching you draw. Um, the big thing is I just kind of zone it out. I, I tune it out and kind of get wrapped it. up. Yeah, and I just do it. <laughs> um, honestly, I feel like that if you, you you get to that destination, like I've watched other artists that do the exact same thing. We'll, they'll do a demo or something like, oh, I don't like this, and they'll crumble it up and put it away and, and go back to you know, a fresh sheet of paper. If you're okay making you know quick decisions and going back on stuff that you've decided about, 
like it doesn't matter because you're going to get to that end point and you're, they're going to see the finished product. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> uh, I just saw that comment wearing sunglasses. Helps yeah. Me. Jocelyn yeah. just said wearing yeah. sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> so so I think that's, a good, that's actually really clever. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll have to try that. Um, so with that, uh, I try to talk to people too. So if there's somebody like stepping over my shoulder, like, Hey, what are you, what are you doing? Like I've had that at the zoo where I, I'll sit and be drawing animals and um, someone will come up and uh, you know, peek over my shoulder and say, Hey, like, what are you doing? Or kids will come up and like, mom, come, mom, come look what he's doing. And um, it's just, they don't understand your process. So getting to the finished piece, like that's your journey. That's your yeah. um, way of, of, finding the path to the right drawing that you like and everyone's unique so people may you know untrained the untrained eye may look at it and say oh well that's just the way everybody does it where in reality someone like you or i we look at something and go oh well why did they make that decision why are they doing this why do they why do they erase that like i thought those are really strong lines like mm. so it's it's a completely different take on um, you know the process. So I, I just tune everybody out and uh, You know if somebody's there. I, I try to talk them through it and say hey So I'm actually trying to figure out the gesture and that kind of helps me Yeah, as, as I talk through it. It helps me kind of remember. Oh, yeah, will said to do this Okay, so I got to do this and then will said to do this. okay. Well, I got to do that. I will say uh, Just to break into this my advice to people who are struggling with drawing in front of other people because I, I was always that way um, is you have in order in order to have a successful career a successful life as an artist in my opinion you have to turn your weaknesses into strengths right I so that's, that's number one so you have to identify what you're not good at and if you don't like drawing in front of people then you need to get to a point where you say to yourself this is something that i need to be able to do to be successful in, in a lot of different ways now not everyone not every successful artist does their artwork in front of other people, but it is a very, right, yeah. it's a very helpful skill. And for you, it seems like it's already opening doors. So I would say my advice to doing that is draw something a bunch of times on your own, right? Absolutely. So that you're good at it on your own and then go do it in public so that you've already got it burned into your brain and you can teach yourself. You can be, you can have successful experiences doing things in public and having people, now you're practicing someone watching you do a good drawing because you've already practiced doing that. And so maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a, a still life of something where it's not going to move and you know how to draw it and blah, blah, blah. Um, but you have to, you have to go through those motions regularly in order to turn that, that into something that you're more comfortable with. Cause now the next time you're, maybe you're drawing something that you're not as familiar with, but now you're more comfortable with people looking over your shoulder. Yeah. So, no, absolutely. I completely agree with that. I think that's fantastic. Like it, it all comes down to mileage and um, how much time you're willing to put into it. And if you really want to be good at it, like you're going to invest the um, invest the time into creating good habits and you know getting up early. Um, I know Jake Parker's done this, you know, quite a few times where he shared his schedule and. Um, I think that kind of information is really invaluable because that's something you can put to the test and see if it's really going to work for you. Yeah. And if not, you can tweak it a little bit and make it work um, towards your strengths so you can figure out those weaknesses and turn them into your strengths. Jake Parker's an animal. We, we shouldn't try to pattern our lives after him. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's only, only going to lead to despair and anguish. <laughs> um, so you're basically so what I hear you saying in this in this interview. The moral of the story is, be Will Smith in Men in Black, right? Remember when he drags the chair over, in in, yeah. in, in the job interview, yeah, and, and he makes a huge screeching sound. That's basically what you did. Yeah, just just do you. Like you'll come up with ideas on your own about what to do, and instead of acting on them, most people will be like, "Oh, that's that's crazy. That's stupid. I don't want. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put myself out there." But it's just you, being you. Then you have you had you said you had like forty people in the room, and whenever you know, and and it's funny because we have like these human, um, uh, human behaviors that we're supposed to do. Like you get in an elevator and everyone's supposed to look down and be quiet. Yeah, we're like we're all humans, right? And so right. my my buddy Wayne, you know, you you met him at, at Comic Con. He's the guy that takes uh, my my uh, 
characters around the different. Yes, 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 yes. Well, great guy. He he likes to break all the social norms, which is has, has been good for me. But sometimes I I just want to be another human and just like put my head down and just be quiet. But in elevators, he'll just he'll just talk to everybody. He's like, so why are we all quiet in here? And it's just it it creates these he creates he loves creating these awkward situations. I don't really like it when he talks to me in the bathroom. The <laughs> bathroom, you know. <laughs> but um, but no, he and he he's a good reminder for me that um, it's okay to be different. You know, we're as artists we're trying to create a unique style. We're trying to say something that hasn't been said before in the world, right? Otherwise, why do it? It's not art. Exactly. And then when we get into a job interview, everyone puts their heads down and is like, okay, I have to behave like everyone else and not stand out like everyone else. And you basically drug the chair across the floor, making the screeching sound again, like in Men in Black, and you got noticed. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I hear from this. No, absolutely. And um, as an artist, like you're trying to prove to these employers that you're you love to draw, and that this is something that you're willing to put all your time and effort, and energy in, all your free and spare time into. And my thought process was, you're sitting there holding your portfolio, waiting to go up there, and you go up there and you show it to him and say, "Hey, I love to draw." Well, you just had you know 30 minutes sitting down doing nothing. And you weren't drawing. Do you really love to draw? Is that something you really are you serious? Because your actions didn't prove to me that that's something you really love to do. Yeah. So I wanted to prove both in word and action that I really do love to draw. And um, it's that, that was really important to me because uh, those people that love those same things and do those same things will be attracted to you. And when they are, you get to meet those you know, great, wonderful artists that you've looked up to, and um, you know, getting to meet a couple of my heroes and people that I really look up to was awesome. And just you know, pick their brains and um, kind of get good insight into what exactly helped them. And if that doesn't help me, how can I tweak it to make it you know beneficial to you know my situation? Oh, great. Um, so what's what's in the future? What do you have cooking? What's going on now? So right now I'm working with that uh, same video game company in Bountiful. We're uh, coming up with our own video game app, and I'm doing all the art for them. So I'm doing oh, cool. characters and props and layouts and um, uh, FX and user interface. So it's it's everything up and back to front. So it's really really fun, and um, it's a lot you like uh, school. I I just I did I finished. Oh school, okay yeah. cool. So Great. Howard, actually, I was talking to him a little bit about this and uh, said, I really want to do the BFA. Like, I feel like I won't you know, be much of an artist if I don't do the BFA because it seems like all of my heroes do the BFA. And um, What are your thoughts on that? And he's like, well, Scott, if you're already getting work, like I know you're resourceful, just graduate and get to work because that's yeah. way more valuable than you know, sitting here listening to us old codgers do, you know, do demos on the board. And, um, yeah, sometimes it's it's better to just be out there if you're if you if you're drumming up opportunities. Absolutely. No, definitely. And I met uh, Stephen Silver, an artist in California who did artwork for Kim Possible and mm -hmm. um, Danny Phantom. A really great guy. I uh, got to meet he's him. He's got so. a YouTube channel as well. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He's he's fantastic. And uh, I got to you know sit down and, and talk with him a couple of times during a couple of seminars that he gave out in California. And um, he said to me that your portfolio is your degree because um, he never went to school. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's amazing. He's done these incredible things. He's got his own school. He does his own mm -hmm. retreat with uh, artists that want to go out and, and work with him. And um, uh, that, that was a real big eye opener for me was Hey, your your portfolio is your degree. Like it doesn't matter. I mean, you you even said this, and uh, you know, all throughout UVU, like it doesn't matter where you go to school. They just matter. It matters that you can do the work. And if you can do the work, then you'll get hired. Um, another big thing of that is like your social skills. Um, a lot of artists tend to get put into that that uh, stigma that they're misfits or they're outcasts or that they're socially awkward. 
And that's a big weakness for a lot of artists that I've worked with and even artists that I saw and met at uh, CTN and artists that I worked with at, uh, um, like they're in Burbank, they have their uh, like, uh, I think it was like a weekly draw, like every other night draw where you, they could have cameras. You can find it on Facebook. They have cameras out and they'll have a live model come up in a costume and they'll turn poses every so often. And I actually went to a couple of those and met people there that were suffering from the same exact things that I was suffering from. Um, you know, the crushing depression and the anxiety and, um, you know, bad social circles, like people that don't support you in what you do, like you gotta get rid of them. Like, uh, I love you, but I, I gotta love you from a distance because you're not helping me, you're not feeding my fire, you're, you're trying to put it out. Yeah. And like, being able to build those social skills is huge. If you don't know how to talk to people, like, they're not gonna you know, be willing to work with you. You need to be able to communicate, you need to be able to turn around something quickly, you need to be able to hit your deadlines, and um, and wouldn't you say being being having positive energy, genuine positive energy, is probably the most important thing you can bring? I absolutely uh, bringing a good like bringing yourself, just being happy with yourself and being happy with what you've done, and because um, like that's what I that's what I think of when I think of you. I think of this this young guy who is if I if 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 I hired you, I I have a really good. Um, I, I could predict that if I asked you to do anything, you would just say, yes, oh, you know, how high, how hard can I, you know, how much do you want? You know, you wouldn't complain. And then, and then there are people that I know that um, if, if I hired them, I'd be worried about asking them to do certain things because I'd be, I think they're going to complain or they're not going to want to do it. And, and I think that, uh, you know, and having, I haven't had um, a lot of corporate, well, any corporate <laughs> job experience because I've been freelance, but uh, I, you know, I've had jobs, um, especially way, way back in the day when I was working at the uh, at the university. My university job, I worked in an office, and we would often hire people. And th this is just kind of a life lesson that I that I learned at the time was every time my boss would hire new people to come in and work with us, he would he would uh, during the interview. You know, he'd, he'd ask the standard questions. He'd get the standard answers. Um, sometimes he'd get good answers. Sometimes he would get mediocre answers. But then when the person would leave, he would turn to all of us and he'd go, what did you think? And the conversation always went to, were they negative or positive energy? Because we did not want a negative energy sucking out the energy in the office. You know, and, and it was like, and it was like, well, this person's super really qualified. And then someone would go, yeah, but they just didn't seem like they brought any energy. And you're like, yeah, forget. And then that person was done. You know, Absolutely. like we weren't thinking about that person anymore. And then it was like, well, this person over here, I don't know if they'd, they'd be able to do the job all that well, but they were super positive. <laughs> well, and, and that's actually really interesting to bring that up because quite a few of the executive producers and you know, art directors that I met in Nickelodeon all said a similar thing. Like if you have great a great portfolio, but you're a pain to work with, Sorry, look, I'm, I'm not going to put up with that. There's yeah. everyone works so tight knit in an animation studio. Um, you know, you're constantly working with the uh, production management and the art directors. And um, if you're just awful and you're not willing to hit your deadlines and you're like a drama queen, like mm -mm, there's so many other people out there that. Uh, are, so how how do you, how do you know if you're negative energy? If you <laughs> like, um, like how would you know if you're walking around and you're like. I think I'm positive. You're probably not, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually, I actually had, you know, a, a come to myself moment when you know, I thought about those those things. Where am, am I really positive or am I really negative? And a, a big part of that is you know, stopping, you know, stop caring about what other people think, and just focus on you and focus on, um, you know, making yourself better, being better than you were yesterday. Because if you try to focus on being Jake Parker, like you're not gonna you're not gonna you know meet those expectations. <laughs> but if you focus on trying to apply some of the skills and the knowledge that he's given and shared, or the knowledge that you have given and shared, and make yourself better than you were yesterday, like that's all you can ask for. And um, I would also base it off of like your social circles. So the people that you hang out with the most. Look at the people that you know. You're the five most important people that you 
converse with? Are they positive? And if any one of them are no, then that, that social circle needs to change. Yeah. If you're not in a, in a group that's positive and helping fan your flame to make you the best of the best, then you got to make a change. And a lot of the times that includes family. Um, I've, I, I've had uh, siblings and um, sometimes even my parents, you know, that I have to say, you know what, I love you, but I can't, I can't be around you right now. And uh, cause I got to do my thing. I, I got to focus on me and I, I, I got to take care of me. And if I don't take care of me, like who's going to? Yeah. Well, this is this has been great stuff, and we've had some really good comments. I apologize for not getting all the questions in. Uh, Kendra does say she wants to take us out to lunch. Hey, so that would be cool. That. We we got that going for us. Right on. <laughs> um, and uh, a couple of little questions here um, at the end. Um, someone saying is age does age matter? And there's, it looks like they're still in high school, and just. Just work on your portfolio. Just work on your your art and be positive and look for opportunities. Don't be afraid. I mean, if you didn't watch the first part of this, um, Scotty talked about um, getting some of his first art jobs. It's funny because your um, your life, uh, your art life, re reminds me of my early life where I went in and 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 kind of kicked in some a few doors and got a job at the University of Maryland where I grew up as an artist um, and I didn't go to the school, you know, like I, like I heard from a friend that there was a, a, a place at the school that needed an artist. And I was in my mind, the first thought was, well, don't they have artists that are, you know, university students? Cause I was just out of high school, mm -hmm. you know? And I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go in there and see. And I had done some paintings. So, you know, some really crappy <laughs> paintings, but, you know, there's there's levels of jobs, right? Absolutely. There's, there's the levels, and so I went in, and obviously there's something in in the the oil paintings that I had done that was enough. And the woman there was like, I can work with this kid, and so it ended up being a great job. And it it ended up uh, I did mostly graphic design work, uh, but I looked, they were able to teach me on the job, and so the, the you know that opportunity I had to kind of create. You know, mm -hmm. someone would have got that. Yeah. And, it's going to be the right place at the right time. Yeah. Well, a, a, a big part of that too is, um, I mean, even Steven Silver you know, talked about this too, that uh, um, the skills are a commodity. Like if you're easy to work with, that's really, really important because they can teach you and train you to develop those skills and give you opportunities to grow. Like yeah. Nickelodeon would have weekly draw nights. They would have uh, draw universities. So they would invest in their artists and teach them better skills and get them to work with people that have accomplished things that maybe that they're trying to get their staff to accomplish. Yeah. And um, if you're tough to, to deal with and tough to work with and you don't have those social skills, like that's really difficult to want to invest into somebody that you know is just going to be a thorn in your side. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I'm just reading this last comment. Don't you think that that's a little disheartening? What I'm hearing is that if you're somewhat of a negative person, you basically don't have a place in the industry. I mean, if you're a negative person, um, I mean, you're, it, it, negatives are kind of repellent and mm -hmm. people just really don't, yeah, people just really don't want to work with you. So um, there, I, 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 I would say if you're, if you're bound and determined to be a negative person, you better have the best skills. Just work, just sit at home and work on your artwork and make your artwork so amazing that whenever you apply, um, when I send out your portfolio or whenever you, you put your portfolio online, people see it, they almost have a heart attack. It's so good. And they're like, we're going to work with this person. And then, you know, maybe they look you up on Google and it's like, this person's a negative person. They're like, we don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this artwork is so amazing. Um, <laughs> well, um, something my wife uh, has said was you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Yeah. So just keep that in mind when um, these situations come up. If, if you're uh, a negative person, um, I would try to turn you know, that into um, something that's going to work for you. So be positive, like turn, turn that negative negativity into positivity. Like, yeah. um, 
read books, uh, you know, watch YouTube videos. Like every morning, I listen to get off Facebook. Yeah, yeah, get <laughs> off Facebook. Like, it's it's great to share and interact with people, but as soon as you do, get get in and get out. Like yeah. you don't want to waste your time. That's an abyss. And I found myself sometimes in that where I'll I'll just be scrolling through. I'll see and Adam Manoa, or I'll see you know, Jake Parker stuff, or I'll see um, Steven Silver, or um, you and, and looking at your stuff, and I just get lost. I'm like, oh, these guys are so good. Like, yeah. I can't compare. And um, you immediately got to nip that in the bud and, and just like, you know what? I'm going to put all that stuff away and not worry about it, and I'm going to focus on me. And as you focus on you, you get better and better. And I would say another, another thing, like in all seriousness, if you want to work on your negativity, Probably the best. So, so if you're negative, that means that bad things have, have happened to you in your life. Okay. And, and so then I would say, if you if you want to break out of that, you need to find people that need help, people that have had even worse things, because there's always people that have had as bad or worse things that have happened to them. If you are helping someone who is in a really bad situation. You will not be negative. You will. You. you your. The humanity will come out, and you'll go. I need. This person needs help, and that's a positive thing, and that will help rebuild you and them at the same time. So. Yeah. Um, giving service, like to, to sum all that up, I, I feel like a lot of it's just getting out there and going and and helping, and going to you know a hospital and um, drawing for kids and. Um, when I used uh, I used to work for uh, the draw shop down in Salt Lake City, the whiteboard animation studio, mm-hmm. and we went to the opening of the new Star Wars movie um, back when they relaunched the series, and or excuse me, when they went on with the series. I know I'll, I'll upset some people if I don't get it right. The the but, Force Awakens is that what you're talking about? Yes, yes. So we went and saw the Force Awakens, and they brought a bunch of kids that were from um, the hospital, and some kids that had. Um, you know, some form of paralysis or some disease or a terminal illness and getting to meet and talk with these kids. It's just like, they're so like wrapped up in, in hope and um, like wanting to make life better. And you're like, you're 12. Like yeah. where, where in the world, like how do you have so much wisdom? And um, they like, they know that, that their life's never going to be the same and that life is going to be, what they make it and if you want to be negative like you'll be negative if you want to be positive you'll be positive um it's all about like your decisions what you choose to think about and if you don't change you don't control your mind like the mind controls the body and if you don't control your mind your mind will will rule the rest of your life yeah good advice good stuff and and thanks a lot you guys for joining in i I apologize for not announcing these ahead of time so you can plan and, and put it in your schedule, but um, my schedule is not as organized as it should be. <laughs> you're, also, you're also very, very busy. Very busy. Yeah, it's, it's easier to do it this way. Um, I know it would be helpful to, to put these out. Maybe I'll get there someday, but thanks for watching and thanks for your comments. And thank you, Scotty, for joining in. Thank you um, for having me. This has been yeah, really fun. It was great. Um, and I'll, I'll, afterwards just tell me what links you want me to put in the show notes and i'll 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 update that yeah absolutely. thanks everybody yep thanks guys